Hey, 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 Dom. How you doing, sir? Oh, doing well. A little wet, a little soggy. Uh, <laughs> tonight was Girl Scout the cookie delivery to the troop, and it decided to rain in a downpour as soon as we started getting the cookies in the cars. Outside yeah, well, of that, I, I'm doing well. How about you? I, I, I was expecting you to make your way to the eastern side of the state, but, you know, there was no knock on the door, and, and then I see you in, 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 in the PACT pod room, so I'm like, okay, no cookies today. So. No cookies <laughs> today. Ah, but yeah, so Dom Salvucci, Southwest Regional Director for PACT. So overall, how are things going? Doing well. Um, came back from Pete and C, hit the ground running. Still getting caught up. Um, talking with a bunch of teachers. I know that we're Pete and C. Everyone's getting caught up, but it was well worth the trip. Um, well worth the trip, well worth getting a little bit behind and already trying some new things out in my classroom that I picked up last week at the conference. How about you? Awesome. Well, you know, uh, the first time I get to say this, my name is Eric Vernal, Vice President of PACT and uh, PACT Pod Host. It's awesome to be here with everybody again tonight. Love doing this pod with you, Dom. Uh, yeah, re-entry is always interesting. You know, my daughters are getting a little bit more wise as they get older that when dad comes home, he's got a couple bags stashed aside with all sorts of gear and stuff from the, the vendor floor. So they kind of pick through it first. And then I always use that as a peace offering uh, for my team because, you know, two, three days without me, you know, dealing with the sub and different things that go with that. So um, I let them pretty much take care of the rest of the bag. You know, I may pull, may have pulled one thing out of there that I wanted to hold on to, but, uh, but yeah, so I kind of went through that, but I think we've got some, some Pete and C stuff to talk about. What do you think? Yes. Sounds like a good idea. A little so, rehash of Pete and C. So I think that means it's time for. Hit it, Dom. The. Where are we? Oh, I'm. I'm going to lose words right here. All right, we got it. PACT pod. I thought he was going to finish my sentence. It's been I a little bit. I... All right. Ah, all good. Here we go. <laughs> hey, all good, man. All good. So. Yeah, again, it's been a little bit. We haven't kind of gone back and forth like that, so that's I all know. good. A little, right, little water log tonight. tonight. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> so welcome to our February edition of the PhD Pod. We are actually at episode eight. And uh, you know what? We're going to talk about Pete and C 2022, how sweet it was. Yes. So definitely, uh, what all have you done? Just returning to your classroom. What all do you got going on with that, Dom? Um. Came back and, you know, from the opening keynote on, um, they talked about, you know, refocusing, recharging, up in the energy, keeping it positive. And that got me going. And I kind of followed a thread on, you know, making better connections with the students, keeping a positive attitude, making work uh, more efficient. I always tell the kids it's better to work more efficiently than it is to work harder. Um, and I, that was kind of the thread I took. And I picked up some of the um, different tips, tricks, and tools from Pete and C. And I've already started implementing some of them in my classroom. And jumped right back into a project for my regular U.S. history classes. Wrapped up a project um, right before I left in my honors classes. So I'm implementing some of the tools and some of the tricks, like I said. And kind of baby steps in. Yeah. So yeah. it's... It's, it's rolling, and it's definitely re-energized coming back from the conference. Yeah, that, you know, and I think that I'm going to jump right off of that theme, re-energized, like, you know, just recharge. You know, I, I think from the first get-go, Jimmy Cassis, I mean, we knew, you know, when we had Ben and Ann on, they talked about the lineup, and you knew something special was the twinkle in their eyes as they're talking about it, and they were not wrong in that no. preview pod. I mean, he just, you know, from the get-go, I'm just getting chills thinking about that talk. It's like one of those things where you wish you could, like, secretly record it and go, but, you know, you'd be breaking all sorts of different things that they've signed, you know, but such such a powerful talk. And then yeah. rolling in through and then and even just ending with our, our, our keynote for the, the Wednesday luncheon, just unbelievable. So from the beginning to the end, just amazing. But you know what? We also had a thing called pre-con. Yes. What did you think of that? Pre-con was a blast. Um, I got there Saturday night, and that gave me time to get some stuff set up and attend pre-con. Pre-con was great, KTI pre-con. Then we had the PACT pre-conference meetup after that. 
And, uh, you know, that was the one thing we taught meeting up with people. It's great seeing people I haven't seen in a couple of years. Um, some not since Pittsburgh. Saw some of the new KTIs from last year. And it was good to touch a base, you know, sharing ideas, working with people again. Um, you know, and feeding off what you said, if people did sign up for the conference, anyone who was at the conference or signed up virtually, the first two keynotes are recorded and they are part of Virtual Pete. I think, believe um, Ben Smith was saying that is available till May. I think he was saying last night in our, we had a little uh, passionate about Pete post conference review last night online, PACT.org. And I believe all that's available for people who attended or signed up virtually till May. So that's a good thing. Go back and rewatch those keynotes. Yeah. What'd you think uh, of Precon? Yeah. The uh, Precon was great. You know, uh, KTI Precon. And the, the great thing is people were able to come that didn't, weren't necessarily attending if they weren't able to be there for the week. So they came up Sunday, did the Precon, were able to head out. Some cool activities. You know, the, the group that took that took charge there. Um some different lead learners, some different members of, of PACT and KTI. I love the fact that, you know, we're constantly just trying to get more people to do different things. Uh, so love the energy. And what was really cool is uh, Epic uh, Games, the, the group that made Fortnite. You know, that gentleman was there, got a great chance to chat with him about the really cool stuff they're doing in the classroom. And, you know, me, I'm a Microsoft Minecraft guy. Uh-huh. And um, so, but I'm always interested in what all's going on, you know, what who's doing what. So it was really cool talking to him and I, you know, Definitely plan on trying to, you know, have conversations with them later. So, yeah, great stuff. Yeah, I liked new faces, new ideas. Um, yeah. Old friends were there, too. But it's nice how KTI and even, you know, PACT in general were, you know, always trying to get new people to step up and interact and, you know, be more active in the team. No, definitely. But, you know, as always, you know, we're here doing the pod. We can go on for hours about it, but yes. I think it's probably better if we – we invite some people on to kind of share about their experiences at Pete and see what do you think about that? I think sharing the fun, get some get some new voices. That's it. It's always about new voices. So let's roll the PACT pod guest reel. Here we go. All right. So with us now we have. Uh, Tracy Andrews and Jen Tony. Hello, ladies. How are you? Hi. Good. Good. Thanks for inviting us. Oh, You're most welcome. definitely. Uh, Great so to be I, here. And I think our batting order is we have uh, Tracy kind of sharing first because, you know, she had some unique experiences at PNC this year. So let me go ahead and uh, switch up our deal here. And, you know, Tracy, tell us about uh, some of the experiences you had at PNC this year. All right. Uh, well, let me just start off by saying that the same thing <clears throat> that both Eric and Dom said. It was very definitely um, re-energizing. You know, February can be such a challenging month. Anyways, middle of the school year, the weather's yucky. Um, and Pete and C always does a great job of re-energizing. But this year, it was even better than ever. Uh, um I had the opportunity this year for the first time to actually be a presenter. It's my fourth year at Pete and C. And ever since after my first year, I have wanted to go in and present. Um, but it has been my own self-doubt that has kept me from it. Um, so this year I had a friend of mine that said, hey, I've got a great idea. Will you present with me? She was the one that, that filled out all of the application. Uh, we did an elementary presentation in an Iron Chef kind of theme where there were educational buzzwords thrown out as the secret ingredient. Um, and then we just talked about how we could use technology, STEM, computer science to help us with those. Uh, um, and what was so exciting for me, and I hope I can encourage other people with this, is I was very surprised and very pleased with 
first of all, how much I actually had to share. While I might not think what I'm doing in the classroom is a big deal, there's a lot of people out there that are really hungry for every little thing that you might be doing, that they don't know everything that's out there. But what was even better than that is we had an audience of probably 30 people-ish. I don't, I don't judge groups of people well, but it was a good sized group. And there were four of us in this group presenting. And I think every one of us took something away from the audience as well. So it was such an enjoyable situation to share with people that really want to know what I was doing in the classroom and also have them share what they're doing. So it became a very much of a dual learning experience um, and was not nearly as intimidating as I had built it up to be in my head. Um, so anybody else out there, please be willing to, to go for it because it's, it's really not that bad. I think the best piece of advice that I've been given is you don't have to be an expert. I was thinking I had to be an expert with things and you don't just get up there and share. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think the, the point you said about, you know, I didn't feel like I was an expert, you know, and the different things like I think I, I always say this, like teachers are, we are so hard on ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, like when we do a lesson, we're like, oh, that tank, you know, but then like either you're getting observed or a kid will come to you and you're like, that was the best thing ever. And you're like, really? You know, or, you know, when you share something, like you said, you, I, this, you know, I do this every day. So I'm kind of used to it. Like, ah, eh. you know, I don't think anybody's really going to like it, but like there's people out there are like, I, I, the concept you were talking about, I've always thought about, but you really showed me how X, Y, and Z go together. Like, it's really cool when you hear that. And then the other thing is like, there, there's really a, a selfishness about presenting because as long as you encourage that kind of communication and that talking, you end up leaving with more than you came with. So you, you fill your bucket, you roll like yeah. it's awesome. So some good points there. It's so true. And I was, I was so surprised by that. Um, I will definitely, I mean, I've already got a couple of things in mind for Pete next year where I will definitely be doing this again. That's good. And that, that's the thing. Like once you get first time you present, you get that under your belt and you see what it's like. It's not nearly as intimidating as mm -hmm. you think it is. You have to remember it. I know like this is the season for uh, in service and act 80 days right now. A lot of districts around here are going in service. People at Pete want to be at Pete. Um, so they're there because they want to be there. Where in service, you know, there's people like, oh, you know, my kids are home or I could be taking a nap somewhere. Not that I'm dissing in service days and act 80 days, but I've been in those crowds and I hear the comments. But if people are there because they want to be there and, you know, it's a totally different vibe. So you have to remember that, like, you know, people are going around trying to pick up ideas. And there's a lot of good give and take between presenters and the attendees. And that makes it all worthwhile. That's a very good point, Dom. It was it was a very different audience than what I often deal with at school because I am I am so passionate about this stuff that sometimes I feel like people avoid me in the hallway because Tracy's going to start talking about coding or STEM or computer science or what she's doing with straws and pipe cleaners now. Um, <laughs> And it's, it's kind of true because I get so excited about it. Um, but what was so fun is this was a room full of people that wanted to hear these kinds of things. Um, and that really changed, changed the climate, changed the dynamic within me. And a bunch of like-minded people, you know, sometimes yes. you know, depending on if you're really getting into the coding, you know, a little bit of that, you know, just geeking out together and sharing and, and it's so nice not to be the one, you know, driving the train, you know, just as they're talking, you're like, oh, man, you kind of kick back a little. And, and the stuff they talk about gets you fired up now. Uh, not only did you present, but just attending in general. Is there anything, any any takeaway, any thought that you have oh as far God. as whether it be a presentation? You know, we, we touched on the keynotes, um, the, the unbelievable cho hot chocolate, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, the keynotes really blew me away. 
this year. Um, I can't, I just can't even put, put words to them because there's always one that truly impacts me. Um, but I was in, in tears in, in two out of the three speakers. And I am not one that is, that is one to just, you know, weep and cry over everything. Um, but what I particularly love about that is this is an ed tech conference. So we're talking, you know, technology kinds of things and computer science things. But Pete and C does such a great job of bringing in keynote speakers that bring the humanity in, that remind us that these, we are still working with you know, in process human beings. I'm in the first grade level. Um, you know, we, we have people clear up to high school. We we are still working with human beings. And those those keynote speakers, it was so inspiring to just be reminded of that and how we can make the smallest difference by, you know, giving that that little child who who can't sit still and is beaten on his desk all day a set of drumsticks and how that can change a child's life. Um, and, and, you know, and so many things that Dr. Brown said on, on Wednesday in um, closing the empathy gap and um, things that really made me stop and think about myself as a person and then as a teacher and, and other aspects of my life. And I really like that because I just naturally, you know, gravitate towards the tech stuff and, and, and pick it up and play with it and love it. But I really enjoy that there are times that make me look at me as a person and as a teacher, because that is the most important in the classroom is how I am treating my children. Yeah, very yeah. well said. And I and I think you have a t-shirt on that kind of goes with what Dr. Brown was talking exactly. about. Exactly. Right? It's it's my because, because my because kids t-shirt. Yeah. Um the question is is why? And the answer to why is is because kids. Um and we did laugh about that quite a bit today because I wore it to school and <laughs> yes, the passion and the teaching is because kids, but Sometimes the migraines are because kids and the exhaustion <laughs> are because kids too. Um, but I, Gray's, I grazing our beards that work grazing the beard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Not just their own. <laughs> I'm hoping I don't ever have to claim a beard because kids, but you, know, you never know. <laughs> I'll get you if that happens. Beard oil and brushes on me. Don't worry. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get on that too. That's it. That's it. Yeah. No. Awesome stuff. Very, very cool. It was. It was awesome yeah. to have you there. And I know. Um, and the other exciting thing is you go from, uh, you know, PACT member. You were uh, at the KTI uh, mm -hmm. summit and even talk about that. And I believe um, you're going to be helping out with KTI this year as well. I am. That was probably the most exciting moment for me because I had in fact applied to be a lead learner. Um, I was very, very, very much changed by the KTI summit last summer and really wanted to turn around and be able to give back when people pour into me I'm the type that want to turn around and, and pour in and give back to others as well. And while at the conference on Tuesday night, I found out that I had in fact um, been chosen to be a lead learner. I was very glad I was in a loud room because I <laughs> literally screamed <laughs> um, because I was just, so excited to be a part of this team to be able to do this and to think that I have a whole week this summer to um, impact and influence a group of teachers that once again want to be there and want to learn this kind of stuff and just want to become the best teacher they can be. Um, and it, I just am, 
I am so excited about that. That was a, a, a real gift, a real blessing for me. That's awesome. Well, I didn't get to hear the yell. I was just watching giddily from the distance and seeing your reaction. So that's really cool. So, so yeah, it's going to be exciting. So looking forward to working with you and uh, it's going to be neat. So I know, I believe, so it, the, is it officially Dr. Jen Tony? Is that correct? <laughs> right. So, I want to yes. make sure. so as, yeah. <laughs> as, as Tracy's talking, as we're asking the questions, she, you could just like see if she's, Ooh, oh, that's really good. Ooh, like she's ready to burst <laughs> out. So we're going to change gears here and switch over. So Dr. Yes. Jen Tony, welcome to Hi. the PAC Teapot. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. I'm, I'm so happy that you guys asked me to join you. And uh, the more, ever since I got that title, I realized it's the more that I don't know. So I don't even like to use it so much because I just learned there's so much more out there that I'm still learning. But uh, thanks for having me. You're welcome. And Jen is also a KTI. Yes, 2019. That is awesome. Uh, did, did you put into did you put in to be a lead learner this year? I did not. Um, oh. I'm actually getting married at the end of this year, so um, I guess we'll let it go. <laughs> okay, hold on, let me get my list. <laughs> but it's that totally was uh, one on thing I list. had to check. Okay, okay, you're not. You're off the naughty list. Okay, all right. <laughs> I think we're, I don't Congratulations. Know certain, Thank you. I don't know for certain if we're broadcasting from the ceremony or not. That's the. That's the <laughs> do, do we get invited? Wait, wait. So Western side, right? Um, I wanted, so wait, it's a. Uh, the, the party everybody can come to the party <laughs> and and you're in western pa i believe you're in you're in the southwest region is that correct she, so um, he's on the border oh. northwest i'm right in the middle yes oh. right in the middle of the north and southwest right um actually tracy and i are right in the same place we're right on the border of ohio so mm -hmm. oh. we actually right, well, so didn't know each other and we met this year at pete and actually ended up presenting together. We did the Iron Chef um, session together because our friend, who actually I had never met in person, was only a Twitter friend, um, <laughs> brought us all together. And I'm so excited because we're all neighbors. We're all in the same um, the same area here and kind of dealing with similar things in our schools. So it was just really great to come together and actually be able to present. And now we've got this great friendship forming. So it was very good. Mm -hmm. well, I, I don't want to distract too much. So let's go into the talk. But I... Just ask me about where we should, where where the PAC should be should be hosting from. All right, so uh, Dom, why don't you take this over? I know you have some questions because I know you you and uh, Jim were talking before the pod to have her yes. on. So I'll let you I'll let um, you jump. So to set everything up, you were at Pete this year. You you did some some presenting and and whatnot. Um, you're a little late to Pete, but that was, or wasn't your fault. Um, <laughs> but you came up with a really good idea, inspired by what? Before we get into the idea, what inspired you the most or one of the things that really inspired you the most? So the keynote on Tuesday, um, there was a panel of principals from right near us in our backyard um, near the Pittsburgh region and the Pittsburgh area. And Tracy and I were blown away by um, the keynote presentation that Greg Bear and the um, the panel of principals did well, on two, Tuesday morning. Superintendents, I believe. Or I'm sorry, yes, yeah, superintendents. And um, I was actually moved to tears, and kind of like Tracy was saying, like I, that doesn't really often happen for me. Um, but it was just so impactful seeing the um, way that they're changing learning. And I kind of have been thinking ever since we returned from COVID, um, just this idea that now is the time to like reinvent or re envision learning. And I had never heard of. Um, everything that he was talking about. I hadn't, I didn't know much about remake learning until just recently. And so the, the keynote um, speakers on Tuesday really inspired me. And I walked out of the room and I even like vowed to myself that I wasn't going to buy another book, but I knew after the keynote that I was going to break that <laughs> vow and I was going to buy another book. Um, but Tracy and I were talking and I just, I wanted to, dig into it right away and and invite others to do it because I felt like a lot of people had the similar reaction that I did after hearing their um, keynote on Tuesday. Yeah, because right after, in fact, it was right after the keynote, I was at the PACT booth and you came up and we were talking about this idea that you sprang upon us. And so, <laughs> so kindly said, we said, well, would you like to run it? And you were like, sure, what is it? So um, I really wanted to do a book study of the book, and it's called When You're Wonder, You're Learning. And it, um, I thought, let's 
call it a spring into action book club. Let's read the book and let's talk about how we can remake learning in our own neighborhoods. And that was really everything that they were talking about in their keynote. And later um, that afternoon, there was a playground session and I was able to go, Tracy and I went, and again, we were very unfamiliar with it. We didn't know very much about it at all. So we were able to go and learn about um, remake learning. And so I thought, let's read the book over the course of say six weeks, there are six chapters in it. And let's start it right around the first day of spring and try to motivate everybody. And the timing works out really well because it will hopefully finish up right before the 2022 Remake Learning Days in Pennsylvania, which is um, starts uh, later in, in the spring. So, And Remake Learning used to be a Western Pennsylvania in and around Pittsburgh um, event, and they've expanded throughout the state. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the first year or it's the second year, but it's relatively new, expanding throughout the state with Remake Learning Days. As I've been reading about Remake Learning Days over these past couple of days, um, I'll be sharing some information about it tomorrow with my district. Um, I noticed that it's also expanding across the nation. There, there's actually a Remake Learning calendar too. And it's just really, um, it's, it's a great feeling to know that that is something that was born right, right near us, um, especially in the Western part of Pennsylvania. Um, again, I hadn't heard of it until Tuesday at Pete and it just totally inspired me and wanted, uh, motiv motivated me to want to have a book club. I know, and I remember you coming up, like you said, you came up to the booth, um, and Josh Buddy and I were there, and you were doing a mile a minute. You had this great idea. <laughs> you already had it, you know, a good bit of it, like, hashed out in, in the rough draft form, and we were talking about it, and it was a great idea, so we're jumping right in with it. And that's the nice thing about Pete. You know, it's the first time back in two years we're in person, mm -hmm. and – you know, it speaks to how powerful it was that we're, you know, running with things right away. And I think it's going to be a great idea. Um, we're going to be posting some things out through social media, through PACT.org, with specific dates and such. So if you're interested in possibly being part of this book club, you know, book study group, please keep um, keep your ear to the ground and eyes on PACT.org and social media following us. Because we'll be putting out specific details coming up here shortly. Um, if you would like to give like a general idea or concept, please, you know, follow up with some with some of the details we've been talking about. Here's the book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we we are talking about midweek, like I said, weekly for about six weeks, and um, I'd love to use this book study as a way to not only learn more about the Fred blueprints that. Greg and the team talked about, but also use it as a way to add more events to the Remake Learning Calendar, if not for 2022, then definitely for 2023. Mm -hmm. And give us an opportunity, whoever joins the book club, to collaborate and share ideas and, and work on um, problem solving together to make events um, really powerful for the, for the folks in Pennsylvania. It's good, you know, to be able to contribute ideas. We're looking for, you know, the theme has been for a while, um, you know, more voices to the conversation. It always makes things stronger. And you're not committed to anything. You get the book. I don't know if it's available in the libraries or not, but you can buy the book online, um, get an e-book, and contribute. You're not locked in. If you can't make it, you can't make it. But we're going to have um, conversation going. It's going to be, I think, a pretty good time. We're looking possibly what to do. Some virtual, some possibly hybrid, where if you you know get a group of people together and meet up through Zoom when we do our virtual meetups, um, you're trying to get you know people connected again. Yes, and we also um, we're I think I mentioned we're looking at doing a chapter a week, and each of the chapters, as I was looking through it, has um, like a a central theme to it that will just help build the events as you're developing it. Um, so that should be a great, great opportunity to focus on some of those areas that people might want to work, work on with strengthening their own skills. I'm glad you came up with this idea and I'm glad you stepped forward to, to kind of pilot it for us. Um, appreciate that. And also, um, we're going to have people 
moderating um, each of the weeks so you don't have to listen to me talking all the time. So if anybody wants to get involved in that capacity, leading some of our chapter discussions, that would be, um, that'd be great. Just reach out to us. Mm -hmm. Hey, and you never know, you know, I, I believe the week may fall on a PACT pod week and maybe we just do like a live pod for the chapter. Yeah, we can <laughs> kind of mix it in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that's awesome. Uh, the the book again. So we're calling it the Spring into Action Book Club. I do believe, mm -hmm. uh, unless yeah. you just coined that now. Uh, when you wonder your yeah. learnings, the book title. Um, yeah. I I did hear somebody was in line to get a book and get it signed, and uh, something happened where they 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 dropped their book or whatever. And, and the I forget who was who was doing the signing. That was um, Greg, Greg Bear. Greg Greg, Greg Bear. Bear. Right and the person's like, oh, well, here's my personal copy. Here, I'll sign it for you. And then they end up finding theirs before he did. But talk about, you know, how great, just like true character kind of thing. So, um, Yes, and yeah. actually Greg has been, um, he's definitely been super helpful as far as us preparing for the book study. So I've reached out to him and, and been in contact with him. And he does live that genuine example, too, of everything that they talk about in the book. So um, we're hoping if they're available, they could even join in at some of the, at least one of the um, book club meetings. So that's uh, to be determined, but hoping that he can make it, they could, maybe both of them could make it to a session. Yeah, I did get the opportunity to chat with him um, after we talked about this and we got our cape. <laughs> I was on my way, I'm like, oh, I forgot to get the book, the book signing. So I'm running through the conference with my cape. <laughs> Jen had strong armed off a vendor for me and totally embarrassed my teenage daughters. I'm running through the conference center, got my book, and everyone's looking at me. Uh, shout out to Linda Laco because the cape had LL on it, and that's her initial. So she went running to get a cape. <laughs> I got my book signed and you know, made a scene and went, you know, back out, cape blowing in the wind, for as you know, fast as it, the wind would go with. At my age, trying to like <laughs> do a brisk walk through the conference center. I left hand. my cape on for the entire uh, day, and then we were at the remake learning um, playground, and it's in like all of the photos they took. So I think I might have to bust out the cape for our book book studies uh, when we get together, especially if we're in person. I had to take mine off, or my wife would let me in the car to go to lunch with her and my daughter. <laughs> I put it back on. I put it back on when I came back to the conference center, but it, in the lodge, but. I had to take it off for lunch. Well, if, if you're a fan, if you're a fan of the Incredibles, Edna would tell you, no cape. Now <laughs> <laughs> be careful. That's funny. Oh, that's awesome. And that's, it, it was LL. Was that the uh, Legends of Learning? Is that? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So now that now re, you got to talk to Remake, they got to do an RL. Got to get Remake yes. Learning. We got to get their cape. Oh, maybe, maybe I'll have to see about getting those for the participants. We'll have to, mm -hmm. we'll have to brainstorm that one. Mm -hmm. oh, that's awesome. And, you know, and this is what I truly love is, you know, I've always said it for the longest time, and I know I'm not the first person to ever say this. PACT is as good as its members, and our members are unbelievable. They are awesome. Mm -hmm. They are excited. They are, you know, fiery. They are because kids, right? And what's awesome is, you know, I love the fact that you came with this idea. You came to the booth, had our, some regional directors, and they didn't say, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, we'll take this to a meeting and, you know, we'll meet and, and kind of squash it. They were like, all right, well, uh, by the way, you you have this idea. You gonna lead it, and and then you go from there. So that's just uh, what I love about the organization in general. You know, I you know eight years or so that I've been here doing different things at the regional director capacity, and I think it's just it's so awesome. So I love that. Thank you so much for your excitement. You know, thank you for bringing that idea. That is so cool. And I do believe that with the coordination, that people will be able to check out uh, the pact.org forward slash calendar to be able to check. Um, any information or even where our event page is and then you'll also be um do we have a twitter handle that's been created for this or anything like that or anything that you'd like us to publicize when we have more information we'll push that out to all of the regional directors and we'll make sure that um the information is shared with everybody so that everybody can reach out and get the information out on social media um so and i do appreciate the opportunity to come and talk with you about it and everybody's um, yes and attitude. It's really awesome to be validated in, in the ideas and carry that through even after, you know, KPI was over. So I'm very excited to, to do this and try something new. And I hope everybody that would like to can join us. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. And then uh, on the bottom of the screen, it shows the bit.ly forward slash all caps PACT lowercase events. Uh, the regional directors will take when you have the dates. They'll also add that there as well as the PACT okay. website. So a handy place you can go one-stop shop for yep. this and other PD opportunities. And then the nice thing is, and now I'm speaking ahead, so you know, hopefully I'm, I'm not speaking out of turn, <laughs> But I do believe in the end, uh, even Act 48 hours could also be included with this because that's something as uh, our organization is able to provide. Mm -hmm. So we could hopefully roll that into the um, the book club and the book study, and, and, and that'd be a, a good discussion because, again, you know, Act 48 hours, it never hurts to have, you know, more and mm -hmm. more and more. And that is something, you know, we can we can roll out. We just don't know how many hours yet. Um, and as Eric was saying, we have the bit.ly, um, you know, PACT.org forward slash calendar, bottom of the PACT.org page. Uh, we have the Educational Technology Today newsletter that goes out weekly, and we send out um, email blasts from PACT. So please, you know, keep an eye out on those because we will, besides social media, you know, we'll get you with email and some other ways, some old school technology ways of getting information to you. Yeah. So, you know. Tom, don't say you carry we are tentatively hoping for um, like March, uh, late third week of March. So that, like they said, that information will be out as soon as we have the final date set. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So from, from Pete and C to the book club, back to our location for the pod at this wedding. <laughs> uh, so, so one running joke that Dom and I have always had is one, one awesome thing is when we're, when we're at a board meeting, there's, we have educators from all across the state. Um, and even now we have some out of state members and things of that nature. And we get to learn a lot about, you know, the different sides of the state. So one of the early things that I learned from Dom was a thing called the cookie table. Yes. That's something that doesn't happen on the Eastern side of Pennsylvania. <laughs> so I've heard about this. I've never been to an extravaganza. Is there a cookie table? Oh, there will be. If there's any indication of what kind of celebration this is going to be, it is called the Wild and Wonderful Western Pennsylvania Wedding. So, all right. Well, you are, it, 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 we won't uh, we won't impose and try and sit at the head table, but you can put us at the cookie table. We want to go to the cookie table. Is exactly what I'm getting at. Exactly, Dob. That's yeah, what I love about my You got it. It's Western. I, it's the Wild and Wonderful Western Pennsylvania Wedding. There will absolutely be a cookie table. So. We don't even need any of the major like the food, all that yet. No, no. We just we're just yeah. gonna have cookies. That's cookie it. Table. We'll, we'll bring our own milk. All right. We'll I, be I, couldn't, oh, yeah. I couldn't do up PACT pot earlier, but I could get cookie table now. It's <laughs> Bring those Girl Scout cookies in after they. Uh, oh, dry out. okay, all right. I, oh, wait, wait, Tom, you're not allowed to sell it at the wedding. All right, you can't sell cookies. All right? no, just ones that are already bought. Uh, well, thank, thank you so much, ladies. I, I truly appreciate it. Again, you know, we're only as good as our members, and we have awesome members. PACT Pod, same thing. You know, love having different members on, different voices on. You know, different people to uh, to share the excitement, to share what they're doing. So. I truly appreciate you coming on. So uh, thank you. We're going to send you back to the green room. I do apologize that our virtual green room just doesn't have the cookie table or M&Ms <laughs> or anything that you desire. I apologize. But, uh, but we truly do appreciate you being on the pod today. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Enjoy Bye. the rest of your week. All right. You too. Take care. All right. That was a good time. That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and you know, for other members out there, if you have an idea of, of something you think would, you know, be interesting, be uh, positive for the group, please reach out to one of your regional directors. And if you're not sure, go to PACT.org. We have a list of regional directors in our emails listed on the website. Reach out to us. Um, reach out through social media and share your ideas. We're always looking for ideas. And they can email us at pod at PACT.org. Yes. Definitely. Awesome stuff. All right. Well, now we're going to talk about some upcoming events, some things that are going on in PACT in your neck of the woods, all, you know, everywhere you may be. So I'll take the first one here. We have a bird brain and code joy webinar next Wednesday, February 23rd. So I do believe there's going to be a link on the website again, uh, even checking out the, let me just have this scrolling at the bottom as we're talking. For the bit.ly forward slash PACT all caps and then the word events. It's, it is a free webinar. Um, 
Tom Lowers from Bird Brain and the uh, some of the leaders that used to be with Bird Brain are now with Code Joy. They're now leaders of Code Joy. They're offering a webinar, and you can go in, sign up. They're going to run the webinar, go through some things. After you attend the webinar, you can actually get your hands on some of their uh, robots for free to use in your classroom on a loan and work with them. Um, they have the Finch and they have, and I'm drawing a blank on the second robot, um, but they have two robots you can use. They'll give you um, lessons, help you work with them in your classroom. You get to use them for free. And then about six weeks out, Tom is going to have office hours uh, over two hours, one for each set of robots. You can meet with him, small group or one-on-one, -on -one and get feedback and work from there. So that's a great um, opportunity for PACT members to get your hands on some technology, try it out for free, see if it's worth um, expanding upon it and whatnot. And it's a great learning opportunity. So that's something to you know think about. Um, next thing we have is a face-to-face -face coffee meetup in Bethlehem, PA on Saturday the 26th. So if you're in that neck of the woods, check out PACT.org for the details on that. I thought I would help us out here with this as we're looking at the Bitly account. So our regional events as we're scrolling down. All right, love the themes. So our January's already passed. As we go into February, as we're discussing. Coffee meetup at Biddy and Booze in Bethlehem, PA. And it's hosted by the Northeast Region. And they have the signups on the PACT.org website. Jumping into March. What do we have going on in March there, Dom? March. Um, March 9th, Northwest PACT is hosting a PBS Tools for the Classroom and a Petency Recap. That will be in person, but the location is yet to be determined. Um, that information is also on the website. I believe it is also on the bit.ly. And um, once they know where they're going to have that in, that in-person meetup, they will post it. And I'll let you take the next event. All right. So the, the in-person event, March 9th, uh, we yes. have the PBS on uh, Franklin, PA, hosted by the Northwest Region. Uh, again, details to be found on the website. So I'll, our, I'll go ahead. I was going to say uh, our out-of-state region does a PACT Twitter chat. So we have members in the out-of-state um, all across. The, the big drive was in ISTE. We have people in other countries um, that are PACT members. And so the PACT chat happens this uh, in March. It's going to be March 10th from 8.30 to 9 p.m. Uh, great time to connect with educators all over really the world because we do have members all over. So it's great. All right, March 24th. Then um, on March 30th, in my neck of the woods, down here in the southwest region, but it's also off a major highway, so south central, northwest, it's not hard to get to because um, I'm up on the border of the northwest and southwest, so it's not that that hard to drive to get to. Um, the Get Connected ELA Conference at St. Vincent College. Um, St. Vincent College of Education, Communication, and one of their other uh, Schools of educate of the college are partnering with Western Pennsylvania Council of Teachers of English, and they asked PAACT to step in and help out. They're holding a conference on Monday, March thirtieth. Uh, I believe it's from eight thirty to two thirty, and details are on paact.org. And the link to sign up is on another website, but you can come to our website and get that information. It's going to be a good conference. Um, there's a little bit of an ed tech lean to it. It's also a lot of critical thinking, critical reading, critical writing skills. They have some uh, good keynote speakers, some good speakers. Some I know uh, we have a KTI. I'm going to give a shout out to Gina Ligori, who was watching earlier. I don't know if she's still out there. She is one of the presenters at the conference, and she always does some great information, great informative sessions. She'll be there. Um, we'll have a table there that day for PACT. So if you're a member, stop by, get some swag or tchotchkes as we like to call them and some people don't. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then, uh, you know, so the Get Connected, we're partnering with St. Vincent's yeah. College. We'll make sure that gets onto the website. The March 24th, right before that, 
uh, virtual makerspace hosted by our southeast region. Um, and then there's uh, early birds get makerspace materials mailed to them. So you want to make sure you get in their ASAP. So that's kind of our forward look at what you have coming up in March. Um, so amazing stuff. One other thing we have that's pretty exciting, and it's going until, so what we have, uh, seven days till the 22nd, PACT has our very own pop-up store. Yes. So ordering, you know, this has cost me some money. And uh, so some great items for our members to order. We've got some fleeces. We've got, uh, love this color block quarter zip. Think that's going to be a good one. Of course, me, you know, I'm always a big fan of vests. Um, and then we've got the Lady Cozy Fleece. We've got our fleece line beanie cap. All right, some T-shirts, some sweatshirts, some long sleeve shirts. We even have masks. We've got um, our cadet collar sweatshirt as you're looking through. All right, working down through the quarter zip sport tech. All right, and then we have our uh, fitted shirts for the ladies as well. Uh, and then we go into some KTI gear as well. So we have our jackets, uh, which I was trying to find to wear for the pod, but uh, I took it to PNC, so it's still upstairs. I didn't get down here into my, my basement corner uh, office area. And a huge hit were our purple uh, KTI masks before and uh, our running cap. Our, uh, uh, we used those, I guess that would have been a couple years ago, for our um, Race of the Regions, I believe. Those were given out for people who were participating. So now we have the cap there and a nice uh, with the logo, the KTI logo. So some exciting stuff there. Oh, and some purple power short sleeve shirts and uh, long sleeve shirts. So um, very exciting. And, and uh, so just your opportunity to be able to pick some items up there. So speaking of shopping, uh, PACT does have an Amazon Smile account. We are a nonprofit. So if you are a shopper on Amazon, please think of PACT. and you know, look us up for uh, Amazon Smile. Most definitely. And, you know, talk about those purple shirts. Maybe th think of our purple bag brigade that we did at, at Pete and C towards the end of the time where the vendors, they kind of get to the point where they have to make the decision. I have to box all this stuff back up and take it back with me or possibly pitch it. Um, so we go around and we collect a lot of the things that they have, uh, a lot of the different uh, swag that they didn't give away. And uh, so, but the cool thing is we have a lot of that stored up that's going to be given out at KTI and other events that are going on. So it's really exciting. So we do appreciate uh, all your support. Um, you know, small bit of the proceeds go towards the organization uh, to help us to continue to do amazing things throughout the, the regions. Um, and then, you know, you want to make sure that you check out when you sign up, you'll be added to our email list for the Education Technology Today newsletter. Um, if you are signed up for it, you haven't read it, you know, check your junk mail folder and make a rule for it. We tried to make sure the title spelled out exactly what it is. And the nice thing is you get information from PACT. You also get some things from NYSCAPE, which is our, our northern organization out in New York. Um, and then you never know when you're doing the book club, you may have some NYSCAPE members join, some different members from other regions, other areas. So uh, exciting stuff. Man, amazing stuff so far, Dom. Do, uh, is there anything else to talk about? Uh, I think we've pretty much we've pretty much covered almost everything we need. But one thing we sometimes forget, we can't forget this time because I think we skipped it last time, is our tech notes. All right, man, let's hit up the tech notes. All right, Dom, tech note. What is catching your attention? What do you have going on in your classroom for this segment of tech notes today? I have a bunch of new ideas that I picked up at Pete, but I'm not ready to roll those out and talk about them yet because I'm still kind of feeling my way through. But I'm going old school. Um, set in on a session of Karen Steigerwaltz, again, our Northeast Regional Director. And I always love going to her sessions because – She's English language arts, um, social studies, but she has a ton of great ideas for writing and you know critical thinking, getting the kids going, and that crosses over into social studies very well. And she had a session on feedback and working more effectively and efficiently. So I'm going old school. Uh, my students are doing a project for Black History Month and on civil rights movement, Google Docs. It's simple. They can collaborate. I put them at work individually or in groups, using the whole Google Suite, created folders, pushing docs they're making for research, 
um, putting all their information in, working on scripts, by sharing it with me and each other. If a student's absent, the group can keep working. I can drop in, add comments, um, see what they're doing, help them out, and collaborate, even if they're not in the classroom, because you can't meet every kid every period in the classroom. Sometimes it's during planning period or study hall, and it doesn't match up when they're free. I could jump in, um, take a look at what the, any issues they're having, see how they're going, add comments, adjust things, help them out. Um, so I'm going old school with Google Docs because yeah. collaboration and working with the kids because kids. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's the easiest way to collaborate. Um, yeah. Basic, old school. Mm -hmm. but yeah, get old school with a new twist, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, we use, I, I, I keep my feet in both worlds, and I'll tell you, the collaboration nature of Docs does beat Word, and, and Microsoft is working on, you know, increasing that and getting that better for their Office 365 online platform. Just had, you know, just had to get the Microsoft stuff out of the way there, Dom. <laughs> but I will say with, with Docs, you know, we, at school, we've been using it well before. It was a company called Rightly that Google bought and transitioned over, and they've just always nailed collaboration. One thing that a little uh, tech note tidbit that I do, I will, you know, you, you push out through Google Classrooms, every kid gets a copy, and I always tell, uh, in my science lab, I always tell one student, raise your hand if you're the Chromebook commander this time, give them four or five minutes and, you know, to kind of work through it, you know, usually part of the uh, process of figuring out who exactly is going to win, a little paper, rock, scissors, you know, rock, paper, scissors, sometimes we'll throw in the Spock, you know, the lizard, you know, get a little crazy with the Big Bang Theory style, and uh, so once the Chromebook commander set, they open it, and then they share it with the people at their lab group. You know, so that way everybody has access to it. But you know what? I do love it. We had uh, just last week we were doing a science lab and, and they were like, well, you know, so-and-so's absent. And I was like, guys, it's 2022. That document shared with all of you. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, but back in the day that wasn't the case, you know, yeah. before the ability to share with Google Docs. Yeah. That, that is one nice thing that if a kid's absent and you forgot to collect that paper from as the teacher, it's sitting in their binder, either hopefully in their locker you can scan, but most likely it's sitting in their backpack. Yeah, you get the... Uh... Why aren't you working today? Jimmy's not here and he has our notes. You know, it's now we'll share the Google Doc. Um, yep. Have the folders in Drive. Everything's organized by period. Have like the master list of who's doing what. So, you know, you always get the student. I forget, you know, I'm in the group and nobody's here. I forget what our topic is. Well, you know, you can either check what you turned in in Schoology or, you know what, here, pull up the doc. This is your topic. Don't forget you have the Google Doc. Here's what you've researched so kids aren't doing back whenever I was in school, back in the 70s and 80s. Library, if you're doing a group project, you're the library. If you're not there with your partner, you guys might be researching the same books over and over, not knowing what your partner's doing. There's no cell phones, no Google Docs, no computers. This year, you can see what's being done so you're not duplicating work and wasting time. So makes makes life a lot easier than back in the stone age of the 70s and 80s <laughs> classic rock and new wave <laughs> working with paper and pencil hey well, real quick on the bottom of the screen i did throw because i forgot to mention that there's a bitly for the store bit.ly forward slash all caps p-a-c-t-s t-o-r-e so p-a-c-t store but if you know bitly you got the capitalization is important yes sir kti still open we will be remiss if we didn't mention that KTI number. Oh, that's true. Yep. If you are yeah, applying to go to Summit, that is still open as well. Great point. Great point. We had, woo, Simple of Excellence, four KTIs on the show tonight. Mm, I mean, it's amazing, right? Yep. Good stuff. All right. So for my uh, tech note of the day, uh, I'm kind of going with the oldie but goodie, and it was not necessarily something that I watched a session on it, Pete. But in having conversations with people, it was something that was coming up a good bit. So I'm going to share my screen here. If this, then that. So IFTTT. So if you've never heard of if this, then that, it was kind of like the first uh, wave of kind of automating things. Um, love it. And they, they call them recipes. So you can kind of scroll through and say, okay, what is it that I, I, I need to happen automatically? Is like I like to say in the back end for me. You know, sometimes. It's, you know, again, sometimes you just have to have things that are for you, you know, sometimes maybe not, but again, if, if this and that, so you can say, oh, most popular social media applets. And again, these are things that people have created already. So they're going to go through, give you some background information. If you want to share a new video, so you like a video you see, 
when I click a button, I want it to automatically kick out to different, you know, I wanted to kick it to Facebook from YouTube. I want to post a new YouTube video. I push it on Tumblr, you know, uh, all the different ways, Discord, just you can set it up with a click of a button, something with LinkedIn. All right. I, I write a blog. I want it to automatically kick over to LinkedIn. It can go Instagram. I mean, again, you can read the screen as I'm scrolling through, even working with WordPress in the back end if you're doing one of the more popular blogging platforms, uh, Instagram or IG. All right. You can add the photos to Twitter, Tumblr, LinkedIn. So I post something on Instagram. I want it to automatically kick to these other platforms. We know it does work with Facebook because as I tell um, students, when I, when I work with students in eighth grade, I share a thing on uh, social media with them and I say, Hey, you know, they don't like Facebook because it's for the older generation. I jokingly say, do you have Instagram? Do you have IG? They're like, they raise their hands. Yeah. I said, well, guess what? Do you have Facebook too? Uh, Cause it's all owned by the same company. So it's a, a way to help send things together, uh, send things easier just with the click of a button. Um, one way, let me scroll back up here. Sorry for the very fast scroll on your screen. All right, again, well, Foursquare, that one needs to be changed. Uh, Instapaper, all right, if you're looking at pulling things to read later, productivity, you can even look based on, uh, I just want Google things to show up. I want Apple things to show up. I want Microsoft things to show up. I even had it set that uh, we had to, uh, one year, uh, somebody had the, the brilliant idea that they wanted us to keep a log when I was coaching football. Keep a log of your hours of when you are on the on the field coaching. So I actually was able to use my my cell phone, set up a geofence, and I used if this and that, that every time I got to a certain address or a certain location, it would automatically put the start time. When I would leave that area, it would put the end time. And so all throughout the week, it would time to do all that. Then I would just put my little report together, um, you know, just for anybody who's in the coaching realm to find out that you make, you know, 8.2 cents an hour when it's all said and done with all the hours you put in for coaching. Um, you know, but again, just a, a very uh, great way to go through and, and pull some things to help, you know, like I say, optimize your notifications to be able to help uh, integrate technology very quickly. I know I always get a, a hard time because when people follow me on Twitter, it'll automatically kick a message out to them, thanking them for following me, looking forward to um, interacting, but then I'm able to see that. And then I'm able to kind of message them or DM them because if somebody just follows you on Twitter, usually you don't see anything unless they reach out to you or you're really scanning your follower list. So there's ways you could use it for that. Again, the school aspect was coaching, um, even keeping simple spreadsheets, pulling different items in. So um, I guarantee if you go in there, just you could spend hours scrolling through looking for your different items. But there's a, a lot of really good tools, uh, you know, and just spitting things out loud of things that I've done. One was pulling in interesting memes that had a certain subject relation, pulling them off of Twitter, dumping them into a Google Drive folder, and then I can kind of scan through the folder and pull out some different memes. So it was a, a way to make me look relevant with different things, whether it be TV shows or movies, things that were out there. I was able to pull that information out, put them on some presentations for our kids to kind of live ended up with some graphics. Have you ever used If This I, Then That, Tom? I have, but not in that much detail. Um it's like one of those things that, you know, I had it set up for a while and then something was reset and it stopped working that well and I've never gotten back into it. But it's something that I probably should revisit because I, I like how you can, the concept of, you know, you start one process, but it, it pushes things over and organizes things for you and can add into other areas. And I like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the most important thing that I like, everything here people have done because they're good at it and they offer it to you for free. So yeah. I'm not having to learn the coding. I'm not having to learn it. But I will say, if you do go in, it's it's really like a drag and drop. Okay, this action is happening from Twitter. It's pulling in a hashtag and, you know, pulling the different information down, whether it's you want to follow the PACT chat, I'm not able to make it. I want to pull all those tweets down. Uh, a lot of great uses in that fashion. And then, uh, again, I'm giving you, because, you know, technology needs to help us in our everyday lives. And it needs to help us in our classroom. So I definitely yeah. think there's that that dual role that it can play. And, and that was one of the takeaways I got from Karen's presentation was, you know, just not just for the classroom, but on the it was more the back end, um, which included personal life, professional life, working on everything. So, you know, it makes life easier. You, you need to make time, the, the self-care, take care of yourself, your family, make time for, you know, you have your, your your kids at school and a lot of us have kids at home 
you got to make time for both. And this is perfect for setting that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just um, automate some things that you normally would be sitting there and taking a half hour to an hour every day or every week. Yeah. Just the, the time adds up, right? Definitely. Yep. And uh, speaking of family and friends, I got a back back channel. Didn't make it on the uh, feed the, for us to put on the screen, but uh, a comment came across my text and it said, ask Eric Verno, there might be a cap in the KTI prize bin. I don't know what that means. It's rather cryptic. Oh, hmm. I'm scanning. I, I didn't get that. I didn't get that, that that tip off. That's great. Okay. All right. So you never know. You never know when prize patrol is going to be in your neck of the woods. And I, I hear, I hear we're working on trying to make it a little bit more virtual. So we'll see what happens here upcoming. That's amazing. All right. Well, I think it's time to uh, make sure we give credit to our corporate council members as we're working on closing out the show. What do you think? I think it's time. Make sure we thank the people that make all of this possible. All right. So thank you to our sponsors. Right, as we're going into the closing, we had this pop over on the. Uh, oh, I think we both hit it at the same yeah. time. Ah, look at that. All right, Janice Conger out of our Southeast region just wanted to make sure that uh, plug in the virtual space again on March 24th. They will be doing a craft together virtually. That, listen, that could be so dangerous, Janice, if we're involving <laughs> glue and scissors, Verno and his beard. I just want to throw it out there. That could, that could be really, really dangerous. So if I would, I just have to make sure I have the kid kid scissors that, that, that don't cut hair. Um, but they want to let they let's create virtually together. All right, I love that. As long as my beard and you know things don't get glued together. Might have, you Tom, might you look a little like, different, buddy. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, I was asked by. Uh, oh, paint. Oh, and maybe paint. Oh, oh, paint. Now we're gonna have like oh man, I'm gonna have like okay back like in the day of college football. I'm gonna be like, uh, oh, go for. It. Oh, not Highlander, but uh, Braveheart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Said, you may take my craft, but you'll never take my makerspace. All right. Good stuff. All right. Any oh. any uh, closing thoughts, Dom? No. Um, you know, the, Pete was a great time. If you know somebody that was there, touch base with them. Get some ideas from them. Uh, I'm fairly certain if they were there, they're open to share. If you get a chance to take a look at the virtual keynotes, please do. Um, you know, it was great seeing everybody Saturday and Sunday at the social events and the, the pre-conference. But there was still that, like, you know, talk with people, how you doing? Like, ah, oh, you know, we're, we're getting by, we're getting through, we're, you know, we're doing the best we can. And then after, after Jimmy Cassis and that first keynote, there was a change. Um, there was more of an upbeat to people there wasn't the, oh, i'm getting by it's like you know i'm kind of gearing up because i'm looking forward to what can i take back what can i do what can i start you know start again what can i change in my classroom even though we're doing a good job there's that extra motivation after that keynote so if you get a chance take nothing else watch those keynotes um if you get the opportunity and share ideas with people i know um i have a lot of information to sort through and i want to go back and watch there were a lot of sessions I wanted to see, but they were happening at the same time as sessions I was going to or, you know, or when we were uh, presenting at poster sessions, there was other events going on. So, you know, there's a lot to sift through. And I think that's what I'm going to be trying to make some time to do 
some more rainy days like it is going on today. I sit around and spend some time on the computer because you can't get outside. It's a little wet outside. <laughs> a little moist. Uh, you know, so so my final takeaways, you know, first of all, you know, how sweet it was, you know, to be back in Hershey. Um, aside from just the, the conference stuff in general, talking with the workers, talking with the people around, like I, I had some awesome conversations as, you know, having coffee in the morning, we did our coffee meetups and even just there talking to the workers, thanking them so much for being there, for taking time to, you know, set everything up for the teachers and uh, resoundingly their response was, thank you so much for having this conference. We just love being back at work. Yeah. That, that serving mentality, like, it, and just such unbelievable people. What was really cool a story was shared was, um, you know, obviously Hershey Park, Milton Hershey founded it. There's the Milton Hershey School District. And, of course, when shutdown things happened, uh, those students were there in their, their uh, I guess they call them houses or where they yeah. stay on campus there. Um, and they said, you know, they were just getting so antsy, so squirrely, obviously being there. Um, they couldn't, you know, weren't doing classes, this or that. So they actually bust them down to the lodge. And then they set up the huge banquet area, asked anybody who was willing to come in to come in to help serve. And and the, the one gentleman I was talking to, he said it was just amazing, you know, work serving those kids, being around those kids. You know, they were different, given different areas, kind of stretch their legs as far as like where the vendor exhibit hall is, things this way. And just that, you know, just to hear the laughter, to hear the smile, and you're, you just see the smiling and all that going on. So I thought that was touching. But again, it was high quality, you know, from the beginning to the end, from pre-con to the, the lunch keynote, just amazing. Um, and, you know, as you think about, I think, you know, how Tracy said, um, really hit on that point of thinking about what I do. Is it really worthy of a presentation? You don't know till you try. There's going to be people out there that aren't doing what you're doing. You think it's old hat. It's their new beginnings of some technology adventure. Um, start thinking about that stuff now because I believe RFPs open in the summer, um, late summer, I do believe, and then they close. Um, I, you know, we'll have to have the exact dates on the next pod or we'll, we'll put them out through Twitter, but that will be rolling for the 2023 and we won't be in Hershey in 2023. I don't nope. believe Don, where will we be? We are going to be up in the Poconos, um, Kalahari, I believe. That is correct. Kalahari resort. So, um, a resort and conference center. So it's going to be uh, another awesome opportunity to, uh, to be around. And so if there's some people from the Northeast or the Eastern side that, you know, making the truck over to Hershey's maybe not the best plan for them. Here's their opportunity. So definitely looking for a lot of things there. And, you know, for those people that aren't certain about presenting, you know, PACT does a lot of events. We have a lot of um, things going on virtual and in person. You know, reach out to some of the, the PACT members. Ask, you know, a lot of us have presented at Pete and C before. We've pre presented in other conferences. Some Many people have presented at ISTE. Um, Reach out to them, ask them, uh, you know, volunteer to present, put in to present at some of the local and regional events and get your feet mm -hmm. wet that way. It's, you know, build your, build up. But like you're saying, you know, just because you do something every day doesn't mean everyone else knows how to do that exact same thing. And, you know, there's plenty of tools and webs websites and things like that that are used every day, but not always used the way you're using them. So. Adding mm -hmm. another voice to the conversation isn't a bad thing. And I don't, I do know that I've heard some regional directors talk as they kind of, um, you know, early in the summer, they'll work on mapping out the year of different events. And there was definitely a common theme, you know, theme of trying to have some sessions, whether they be in person in different regions or, or virtual that involve, you know, creating your um, application, writing your application yeah. for Pete and C. So you definitely want to be watching the uh, checking out the bit.ly forward slash PHT events, uh, the Spark page. Um, you want to make sure that you are checking out that information. It'll be updated as things get added to our calendar. Go on PHT.org forward slash calendar. Uh, if you want to make, you know, make sure that you don't miss anything, um, check the regional blasts. I believe um, they come out on Mondays. Uh, you'll get information about what's going on all across the, the state and uh, beyond. And you want to make sure that um, if you don't see anything, reach out to your regional director. Go on to PHC.org, take a look. All the regions are listed there. Um, and then you can just specifically email them directly. Say, hey, are we doing something like this? I really think this would be a good idea. And beyond Pete and C, 
if there's something that you know you you're, you you want more information on, you want to brush up on, reach out to the regional directors because you know it's kind of like the the Ed Camp thought. You know, the smartest person in the room is the room. Um, you know, we'll reach out to our membership and anybody who's, uh, you know, that maybe a, a they're they're an ambassador for that product. They are, you know, using this program every day in their classroom. Whatever the case may be, we'll try to make that available to you again in person or virtually, and, and try to have that. And if you're a premium member, you have access to the Kite Learning, and that has all different kinds of tools, um, little lessons, mini units, self-paced lessons to work with different things. So, you know, there's plenty of opportunity. Obviously, um, especially coming out of the last couple of years, interacting with people is a lot better than interacting on a screen, but there's options available. Mm -hmm. So reach out, contact us, and you know, let us know what you're thinking. And as we say, the PhD Pod's live every third Thursday of the month, and it's it's a true honor for us to be on here, uh, serving PACT, serving you, sharing the information. So we truly appreciate it. So in closing, thanks for joining us for another PACT Pod. And as always, remember, PACT, we are the voice of EdTech of Pennsylvania and beyond. Have a great Have month, everybody. Great night. Ah. Uh, Take care.